This class will deal with uh, marginal cost pricing. Now marginal cost pricing involves setting the price at just above the variable cost of production. So we work out the variable cost of production. That means we work out the amount of direct labor, direct materials, the, the cost of producing the product. Forgetting the overheads, leave the overheads out of our consideration. Just concentrate on the variable costs of making the product. So it involves, as I said, labor, uh, perhaps machine time um, in, in the form of uh, power used, electricity used, or whatever it is. Uh, it involves the materials that have gone into the product. So we're looking at the, the variable cost of production. Now if we can work that out, then marginal cost pricing is associated with that concept. It's trying to set the price near the variable cost of production. It'll set it slightly above, of course, in order to make a contribution towards the overheads. But the idea is to work out the variable cost of production and then set the marginal cost uh, pricing regime close to that figure. It's mainly used in short-term price setting. Um, sometimes when companies get special orders in, they will try to work out exactly what does it take to produce the output to meet that order and then work out uh, what they can charge for it and perhaps add um, a small markup to make a contribution towards the overheads of the business. Now marginal cost pricing is usually employed when a company has a small amount of unused productive capacity available and it decided to bring it into use. In this case the company wishes to sell all its uh, resources productively. It attempts to in a sense maximize profits. So if a company has some idle resources, perhaps some machines standing idle or, or staff who are being underutilized and it picks up um, some, some orders, it can price those orders very cheaply because it's better to have those resources working than standing idle. So the company will work out what exactly are involved in terms of costs, costs of meeting those special orders, those those uh, orders which arrive perhaps almost randomly or, or on, on particular occasions. So it works out what it's going to, to cost to, to meet the orders. Those are its variable costs and then it adds a proportion towards the contribution to the overheads of the business. A company wishes to be more competitive and reduce its price. It attempts to increase its sales by reducing price. So in the short run, uh, it's, it's a good tactic. It's a tactic which uh, enables the business to set its prices very competitively. It knows what it costs to make the product in terms of, as I said earlier, of raw materials, direct labor, perhaps the, the power that's needed for the machinery. and uh, So it knows what what's involved in terms of costs. And then it adds a small markup to make a contribution towards the overheads, as I said. And in this way it is setting its price very competitively in the market. So it's looking really towards its pricing strategy. It's looking towards uh, beating its competitors in the marketplace. So it's setting its price very competitively in the expectation of making a lot of sales, a lot of sales with a markup towards overheads from each sale, from each unit sold, means with a large volume of sales it will cover its overheads. That's its expectation. So it's an approach to pricing strategy. Now with marginal cost pricing, the sales are intended to be on an incremental basis. Um, it means that the sales uh, are in a sense added on one to the next. It, it's, it's dealing with its idle capacity, it's dealing with resources which are underutilized and it's 
trying to bring those resources into full play. It's trying to bring those resources into full usage. And it does this by cutting the price of the product, stimulating the demand for the product in the marketplace because it's charging at just above the variable cost of production. I say just above and I keep emphasizing the point it is adding a markup towards the overheads, a small markup towards the overheads. It's often used in the short term strategy to bring unused capacity into production as I said earlier. So this is the reason why we would have marginal cost pricing. It's to make sure that all parts of the organization are working. All parts of the organization are making a contribution towards the profitability uh, of the organization. So it's better to have the resources working and making a small contribution than standing idle. The variable cost of a product is usually only the direct materials required to build it. Well, I say only that, but in fact, uh, it may be that there may be some, some element of direct labour. Uh, generally speaking, however, labour, once it's implied, it's implied whether it's working or not. So in that sense, labour becomes almost a semi-fixed uh, resource. However, it may be that uh, some workers can be shifted from one routine to the next and reallocating workers in this way we can start to see it as a type of variable cost because we're losing a contribution in one area and gaining it in another but if you wanted to take it very simply we could simply say the variable cost is the direct materials uh, slightly more sophisticated be direct materials plus the direct labor uh, slightly more sophisticated again the direct material plus the direct labor plus power usage or any other uh, variable cost associated with the particular product so it depends on how sophisticated we need to be in terms of our calculations direct labor is rarely um, completely variable since a minimum number of people are required to run a production line irrespective of the number of units produced and that is um, a rigidity that the company has to deal with uh, sometimes to get a production run going a certain number of people are required to perform certain tasks the, the tasks may be completed let's say sequentially and uh, the work moves from one part to the next but a certain number of people are required for that and in that sense uh, it's almost irrespective of the level of output if the company is producing a lot or not so much the same number of workers may be required because uh, each worker is needed for their contribution so in that sense um, labor may be seen as uh, a fixed cost or sometimes uh, economists in particular talk about them being semi-fixed uh, as opposed to variable uh, semi-fixed means uh, they can be changed but it's very difficult to change it now let's do a calculation say company X manufactures let's say 9,000 units of a product with uh, seven pounds of variable expenses so it makes nine thousand units of these products and let's say seven pounds of variable expenses uh, four pounds seventy five of allocated overhead expenses are required to cover the overheads needs to have four pounds seventy five per unit uh, company X has sold its current production at a price of say ten pounds but has idle capacity available. So this is the scenario that we've been given. Now assume the um, company is approached for a further four and a half thousand units, four thousand five hundred units. Now to capture this order the sales manager may set a price of eight pounds, not ten pounds as, as it is before. But in order to ensure this particular order the sales manager may reduce the price from 10 down to 8. 
to try and make it more attractive and to clinch the deal to, to get this particular order. This will generate an incremental profit of one pound on each unit sold or uh, four thousand five hundred pounds in total. Well, if we look at the variable expenses of seven pounds above, if it's selling the product for eight pounds, it's making one pound on each one pound on each unit. And if it sells four and a half thousand, then it makes four thousand five hundred pounds. And that's revenue that it would not have received otherwise. That's, that's because it had spare capacity to produce this particular item and uh, it was able to take on the order. But in order to ensure the order, the sales manager reduced the price from £10 down to £8. And at £8 the company was making one pound profit or one pound contribution not profit one pound contribution towards the overheads it's not a, a profit that's a wrong use of the word the sales manager ignores the allocated overhead of four pound seventy five per unit since it's not a variable cost so the, the sales manager doesn't take the overheads into account. It simply looked at what will it cost to produce each unit? Well, it'll cost seven pounds. How much can I get for it? I can get eight pounds. So it makes one pound. And that is better than not getting the order. That's better than missing the order entirely. At least four and a half thousand pounds went into the business. And those four and a half thousand pounds will contribute towards the overheads. Now the advantages of marginal cost pricing, well it adds profits. Uh, there will be customers who are extremely sensitive to prices. If so, a company can earn some incremental profits from these customers. So sometimes customers are very price sensitive and by marginal cost pricing the company can sell some of its output at a very low price. It just works out what its marginal costs are and adds a small amount towards its overheads. And in that way it should capture these price sensitive customers and adds to its profits or, or certainly adds towards its contribution towards the overheads. Market entrance. Well a company can use marginal cost pricing to gain entry into a market. However, it's more likely to acquire the uh, more price sensitive customers by so doing. So sometimes when companies want to get into markets, they need to be very competitive on prices. They, they need to have very low prices compared to uh, existing firms in that market. So one way to do it is to work out the marginal costs of producing the product at a small amount towards uh, overheads and try to enter the market in that way. Uh, it may however just pick up the, the price sensitive customers, the ones we talked about in point number one uh, above. So it may again entry into the market. It may al also of course uh, provoke retaliation by established businesses who may also cut their prices. So there may be a price war sparked by this type of uh, activity the uh, existing producers in the market may not simply accept a newcomer coming in charging very little for the product they may retaliate by cutting their prices as well. Uh, accessory sales. The sale uh, um, of product accessories or services at a good margin may make marginal cost pricing for the product possible. A company will make little from the product but considerable from the sale of accessories. Uh, an example with which uh, many people are familiar in this context is let's say when they, when they buy a, a printer, a computer printer from a computer store. Often computer printers are very cheap to buy. 
considering the amount of technology that's uh, incorporated in the product and uh, they are very cheap to buy however the ink for the printer tends to be quite expensive so the profits perhaps are on the ink not on the printer so the producer must get customers to buy the printers and thereby lock them in to buying the ink so sometimes uh, products may be sold cheaply however to use the product some related product must be purchased and that may be quite expensive so that may be a way of generating profits now the disadvantages of marginal cost pricing well first of all long term pricing the method may not be suitable for long term price setting unless the price covers the variable costs and makes a contribution to the, the fixed costs in the long term uh, companies cannot sustain very cheap products they, they can't continue selling at near marginal costs near just covering the variable costs of production uh, they must make a contribution towards the overheads they must ensure the viability of the business they must sure ensure the businesses uh, continuance they must ensure some sort of profitability and return to the owners who have invested in the business they must make a profit so it's not really a long-term uh, policy it can't be be used over a prolonged period it ignores market prices marginal cost pricing sets prices at their absolute minimum um, so if it's rigidly followed it may lead to some very strange behavior uh, if uh, if the product is currently in the market and selling at a price then why significantly cut the price below that simply because marginal costs are less why not simply set it below the existing price in the market to try and pick up extra sales that way instead of rigidly pricing at marginal costs why not simply look at what is uh, currently charged in the market if there is uh, such a price look at that price and and then perhaps sell at a discount but not necessarily at marginal costs marginal costs may be too extreme it may be too cheap so the company is losing margin simply because it's rigidly following marginal cost pricing it may be better to be more flexible look at what is being charged in the market and undercut it and in that way it's making more than the marginal cost pricing it's making a bigger margin customer loss well if a company routinely engages in marginal cost pricing and then attempts to raise its prices it may find that it was selling to customers who were extremely sensitive to price changes and who will abandon it at once so as a way of gaining a foothold in the market marginal cost pricing sounds attractive it sounds like uh, the company should just cover its variable costs in other words charge uh, the, the, the cheapest it possibly can as I said maybe add a small amount for contribution towards profits or, or overheads but charge very little for the product and in that way hope to gain uh, a position in the market but in fact it may be the case that the customers in that market are extremely price sensitive and any attempt in the future to increase the price above the marginal cost will simply lead to a loss of customers so it's there's a problem that the company must know who the customers are and what the customer motivations are cost focus well a company that routinely engages in this pricing strategy will find that it must continually hold down costs in order to generate a profit which does not work well if the company wants to transition into a high service high quality market niche 
So the company may trap itself with a very cheap product and it's not generating the resources to enable it to innovate the product and perhaps increase the quality, increase, increase the reputation of the business, uh, increase its margins. Uh, perhaps the company will be associated as a company that produces cheap products and it will be very difficult for the company to climb out of that reputation because the company is constantly selling products at a very cheap price the customers think about that company as a company that sells cheap and is, is not uh, known for its quality or for its innovation so the company may lock itself in if it uses marginal cost pricing on a, a continuous basis or over a long period or resorts to it frequently Our evaluation of marginal cost pricing well this method is used only in a specific situation where a company can earn additional profits uh, from using up excess uh, productive capacity well it's ideally suited to situations where there is idle capacity uh, it would not be highly recommended that the company uh, tries to do this right across its production lines and tries to just sell at variable cost because it will run short of resources necessary to maintain the company to maintain its assets uh, to invest to train the workers and to run uh, in, in a, a responsible manner the, the company will eventually uh, run down it, it will fail so it just uses up spare capacity and it tries to ensure that all of the assets are working uh, and, and, and ensure that there, there is a contribution from those assets but uh, it, it earns additional profits from them but it's not a long-term strategy it should not be a long-term strategy it will lead to uh, as I said capital wearing out and uh, the inability of the company to reinvest. It's not a method to be used for normal pricing activities since it sets a minimum price uh, from which the company will earn only minimal if any profits. So it's it's not the normal. It shouldn't be seen as normal. It's, it's a temporary fix, a temporary situation. it's generally better to set prices based on market prices so it's far better for the company to look at what's happening in the market if there are competitors selling similar products see what they are charging and instead of charging at marginal cost try to charge above marginal costs thereby generating contribution to profits and overheads and but at the same time being competitive perhaps being able to undercut the competitors in the market and that will be a far better strategy but it must be seen as a temporary measure not a long-term uh, pricing policy so that's all we're going to deal with in this session that's all we want to say about marginal cost pricing there are other videos uh, related to this that uh, you should look at as well but that's all we're going to deal with here, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.